Hey, everybody. Hi, I like your Zoom picture. <laughs> I know, it's my, that's my guy. It's me as Michelle de Montaigne. This is the original right here. Where's my camera? I love that. That's yeah. awesome. So I, <laughs> that's the look. That's the look. <laughs> it's the hot look of today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fierce. Oh, yeah. I know it fit pretty well. Well, how's it going, everybody? I'm really good. I went to the beach this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's Day trip. great. That's it good news. It was awesome. I went to Manzanita. It was gorgeous. Awesome. Nice. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. Did anyone else get out and do anything fun? Homework. <laughs> Homework. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Friday, man, I was exhausted. I was telling the 202 class, I, I crashed hard on Friday. I could barely move. It was weird. I don't usually get that trashed, but oh well. I guess we're all, a lot of stuff's been going on. What, what can you say? Yeah. Well, cool. Well, we'll have some fun today. Kind of keep playing around with our cities, get these going. Uh, and what else? Two meetings now. Um, yeah, so let's go over to the Figma page and we can sign in and start doodling. Um, and I'll just kind of look at what we're going to do here. Um, how many of you guys have had a chance to go through the, uh, the Sean, Sean O'Skay videos on the, uh, the beach? Okay, awesome. Cool. Anyone else? Nice, nice, nice. Okay. It's actually, um, should we have started our cities already? Yeah, you know, you can get, yeah, okay. add, but it, yeah, so we're, we're kind of doing it in my inimitable style, I guess, of like kind of vaguely getting things started and letting people do what they do. But, but by the end of today, you should have a pretty good sense of it. Have you started it, Tam? No. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, it, it's like, you don't have to have done a whole bunch of stuff. It's just really to kind of, the first week is literally just about getting at all familiar with it and to get, get kind of comfortable with the process or to get comfortably uncomfortable or however you want to put it. And then we're going to kind of build on it today. Today we'll get into some more kind of interesting tricks. But um, the other thing is that Sean's, I think the, the intro video, what did you guys think about it? The, the blender intro of the beach scene? I I really liked it. Yeah. I've had experience with Sean Oske oh, in yeah. the past as I'm part of the theater department. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it, it was really good. I liked it. Um, yeah. I'm a very visual learner. I have to be walked through stuff like step by step. Yes. And I, I really like that. And I, I think a great, if you want to get even further down that path, uh, you can look at the videos that Sean put together for our rendering and digital drawing class on doing a dungeon, which would kind of be right up, right up our alley for what we're doing in here. Uh, I'm going to go through a lot of that similar stuff in a, in a kind of a different way, you know, um, <clears throat> so just a different, but it's a different perspective. I mean, it's like, it's cool to be able to watch different people work and it's been fun for me to teach with Sean and just kind of see how he thinks about things differently or how he approaches things. And I really, I just appreciate his take on it. So um, check it out. Yeah, Mai, I'm sorry, I saw you raise your hand here. Uh, just a quick question about the movie yeah. that I wanted to, the um, Zoom room link, instead of linking to the Zoom room, it links to a calendar file that has the Zoom information oh, in it. Oh, that's not very helpful. On Moodle, it's giving you the messed up. Yeah, I also, it I'll, doesn't, fix that. doesn't do the password. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Just password, I don't think I before. even added the password in, so. Just wanted to bring uh, that up before class. All right, started. thank you, yeah. I'll, I'll, if I don't get to it today, remind me on uh, Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, good. So yeah, if you if you get a chance, I would I'd really recommend those. There's a, there are a lot of cool tips in there that um, 
I've gotten out of it actually. And I've been working on this for a long time. And I was like, oh yeah, how do you do that? You know, so it's cool. You always find that when you go through that stuff. But um, I think the other thing with, with working in Blender is that everything is very specific to doing a specific thing. <laughs> you know, like how do I make a spiral staircase or something like that? There, it's like, you, once you get the, uh, the principles, you can figure it out, you know, but until you have that kind of in the back of your mind of like, generally how this process works and kind of what this 3D stuff is, it, it can be difficult. So today it's gonna to be kind of about, we're gonna go through, we'll do some little step-by-step -step things to just show you some more kind of detailed procedures. But if you can keep in the back of your mind, the idea that um, what we're doing is we're working basically with this kind of like geometric data that we can manipulate in different ways, but understanding that everything's made up out of points and edges and, and uh, faces, you know, and that we're kind of, how do we deal with a world that's made up entirely of points, edges, and faces? And, you know, we're all curvy and stuff, you know, we have like curves and we're not made out of like hard angles. So this is an alien kind of a world. So it takes a little getting used to, so cool. <clears throat> Well, let's go ahead and jump in. And um, this will at least get you guys started in, in terms of thinking about kind of how to approach this maybe. And like, it's an ongoing process, but maybe we can start off. Uh, if you look down on the Figma page, there's a, uh, there's a page that says modular city project and go down there. I just started to cut together some notes and some images. And so if you zoom in on these, you can select one of them so you can view it full screen because otherwise it's kind of useless. You can, so if I wanted to zoom in, I'll share my screen with you guys here. Um, so just, it's a little, whoa. Get my zoom life together here. So if I wanted to, I'm kind of pointing away from the camera. Sorry, you're seeing the back of my head. <laughs> uh, that's my monitors over here. But. But if I wanted to zoom in on like this thing from uh, Assassin's Creed over here, I can select it and then I hit shift two and it will zoom in on that. So this actually looks like concept art for Assassin's Creed. And this stuff's great to look at because it's cool to look at because we don't have to necessarily do, do concept art that's this. Uh, this is very literally three dimensional I'd be suspicious if the person who did this didn't use some 3D software as maybe an underdrawing. This is what we talk about in the rendering and digital drawing class that um, um, you can use 3D software as a way to kind of work out a lot of your perspective problems. This kind of has that vibe to me. <laughs> it feels like it's kind of built on some kind of, you know, nice and uh, cozy little 3D shapes, primitives, but that's cool. So we can get the idea of uh, architecture of modularity. So like um, these arches, like these two arches here are the same. And this is not like a probably a deep revelation to you. You've probably realized that, you know, uh, these two arches are the same. These two arches are the same. There are lots of these pairings, right? And so you can kind of see, oh, these windows are the same, uh, you know, and maybe there's an opportunity to use um, things over and over again. Um, and you can kind of almost think about it the way this is built. You could see, you could kind of imagine this kind of modular thinking. The other thing I want you guys to start thinking about <clears throat> is um, composition. So, one of the kooky things about working in 3D is that when we're manipulating it, we're looking at it from all these different angles, top, bottom, we're spinning it around all the time. But if you think about like a special effects shot in the movies uh, or the background of um, a still image, it just has to work from one angle. And it really helps to get the drama to create scale uh, to create atmosphere and a, a kind of a vibe, if you will, of your image by thinking about it through the lens of a camera. So we can imagine here, where is the camera in this scene? It's up 
above the castle walls here and it's looking down. So either there's a drone up here that's doing this or there's someone in the castle wall behind it that's higher up, we don't know. But it gives us, or maybe it's an assassin practicing his creed, you know, I don't know, because they just, that's about climbing around on these like different platforms. So uh, there you go, you know, so it, it, it's thought about like, giving us this gives us that kind of perspective of this is what the player is gonna see, this kind of thing. So this would be a very different scene if it were from the bottom. I, I don't know if I've dragged some of those in there. But anyway, if we, we cruise around, you'll see some other, these are also from Assassin's Creed. I was just thinking about that today. I really like the art on this. This is from uh, Greece, you know. And, but you can kind of see the layout of this city. These are just some ideas for how you might approach the city. Like, okay, some walls. One of the things that's maybe you could think about here is like you could use landscape you know, elements if you wanted to, which is a different kettle of fish, but you don't have to. This really has more of like a flat ground plane that everything's on, you know, so that, that like we don't have these massive like natural um, features in it. So, you know, it's up to you. So the, the whole point is like the world is your oyster, you know, you can kind of do what you want. Um, <clears throat> Undercity from old WoW, back in the day, you know, this is much more low poly kind of a deal. But, um, but again, very cool. Like you can see the repetition of these elements, like these columns down here, these, these spires, like this tower here gets used over here again. These towers get repeated, these spires, you know, kind of these, the theme of these like arches and, you know, diff different little pieces that you can build modularly and, put together in different ways. So uh, these are just other shots of, um, I'll turn this on too here. Yeah. So yeah, the repetition of architectural elements like these steps, right? So steps here, steps here, same steps here, same steps there, columns. And you can have little variations on the columns, you know, and all that. But um, be mindful, you don't have to work all this stuff out at the beginning. You don't have to figure it all out as you're doing it. You can, it's okay to have like, I'm just gonna make one set of columns or one set of stairs, lay it all out, get the sense of this is what I want or not. And then I can go back and make little variations on those things to make it look better. You know, but you don't have to do it all at once. Um, yeah, and I like looking at low poly stuff because it really gets, lets you see what we're doing. You know, it's like, this is low poly, you can be, oh yeah, you know, stuff's really blocky and chunky, I get it, you know. Um, let's see, uh, what are some other ones? Yeah, this is cool. So again, this is a rooftop vantage, which again, because Assassin's Creed, you're running around on roofs all the time, so. But the other thing I like about this is this is showing us compositionally a couple of things that may or may not be obvious here that um, so this tower over here is bigger than this tower, but because this tower is closer to us and framed accordingly, it takes up more space in the composition than this tower over here. Now we get all that for free in 3D, but you want to be thinking more like a cinematographer as you're doing this, like a filmmaker. Like you want to create a dramatic thing, experience, visual experience for people. So this thinking about foreground. So I would say like this whole thing is kind of, I would consider this foreground and then midground, And then you see this background back here. The other thing we see going on is atmospheric perspective, or you'll hear it referred to in 3D as volumetric lighting, which is, lighting that has things like dust in the air so you get the sense of air being a volume uh, so but in painting we would call it like atmospheric perspective so these are things that you can add in blender down the road or you can add them in photoshop and i don't know if i've talked about that very much but you should always uh, photoshop the living daylights out of your renders <laughs> <laughs> because you're creating an image and it's not like you have to do it all in Blender, it doesn't count. It's like, no, it's like, it's, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, everything counts. Uh, so make it look cool. I guarantee you that all of these stills 
were probably photoshopped and within an inch of their lives, you know, anything that makes it kind of more of a public is usually that way. Um, well, so these are just more shots from Undercity. And, and thinking about how you frame things up compositionally and to create a sense of scale. So, you know, because if you, you've probably noticed in Blender, everything feels like these little ticky tack plastic boxes. And so we have to work to get things to feel big, you know, and get things to feel massive or create a sense of scale. Um, and then even something like looking at how do we get this sense of that the world continues because the world that we're building is gonna be pretty limited in a way because we're building it. <laughs> So how do we create the sense of, of life continuing on beyond this? Well, you could drop a backdrop back there, or you could maybe make some uh, planes that, that fit back there. So we'll talk about that more. But I just wanted to get you thinking about this. And I want you guys during this week to start to collect uh, your own imagery of the stuff that you're looking at, stuff like this. Like I was looking at this um, today, and so that's what I put in here. So, And you can use your own Figma documents to start to capture the stuff that you're doing on the, on the internet, it's really super easy. You just copy and paste it. So um, like if I wanted to look up, what's what, what, what's a cool city environment we should look up, guys? Oh, here's one. I think I can talk about this. Um, so this, this is all got torn down, unfortunately, but um, I don't think we can see the same screen you're looking oh, at. Oh, sorry, I'm on the different screen. I've got three screens. <laughs> I've got screen megalomania. Let me see. Uh, the scale, it's, it's, it's spiraled out of control. Oh, where'd it go? Show me. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let's stop share and start share. And we'll share, I guess it's this one. All right, well. Um, <clears throat> so we can take something like this. Holy moly, that's crazy. So we'll take this and we'll copy the image and then we'll go here one, make sure nothing is selected, and then uh, paste it. And there it is. So it's really easy to just copy and paste stuff off the internet. That way you've got a record of this stuff. So what did I say here? Um, yeah, so we should think about scale. You know, you can use that base mesh Bravo. We showed you guys how to bring in as a way to kind of get scale, or it's just basically two grid scares. Two grid squares by default is six meters, which is about, or yeah, six meters. No, two meters. <laughs> Sorry, each, each square is a meter. So base mesh Bravo is just under two grid squares. So because two grid squares would be two meters, which is around six and a half feet. And that figure is meant to be about six feet. So, um, yeah, have some kind of a ground plane helps at some point and think about creating a strong camera shot. Uh, okay, cool. That being said, let's head on over to Blender. I'll bring that over. Oh, and I need to fix my screen share, sorry. Okay, so. Why is that not showing up? Are you guys seeing the screen now or not? Are you seeing Blender? Blender, yeah? No. I see it's just a menu desktop. Yeah, yeah it's There's just something. your desktop. What's going on? Okay, there might be, a, I, I have a new setting on this. All right, so let's try that again. I can do it this way. All right, just remind me, I'll, I'm sure I'll screw this up. So, and start doing something else off screen. So for some reason, the desktop thing is being for some kind of a way. Okay, you're seeing Blender now, right? <clears throat> Blender, yay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, okay, so let's start off with general. And just to review, you know, middle mouse click and drag to circle around, or if you're on the two finger drag on your trackpad, or use the little, just grab the axis up here in the upper right hand corner and spin it around. Okay, so we're going to delete the default cube today, and we delete with X, or you can use the delete key. We get this little prompt, and we're going to see today how we'll, we can use that. I think we're going to see today how we can use this to our advantage. But. All right, just another review. We have a light that we're not really going to be using today. I could delete it. But we do have a camera that we are going to start using because we want to start framing our shots according to the camera. So yay, camera yay. So a keyboard shortcut you'll use a lot is numpad zero, uh, which will switch you to the camera view. So that's what the camera is looking at. Um, and if you don't have a numpad, uh, which some of you don't probably, um, um, you can go up here to view cameras, active camera. Since we only have one camera, it's the active camera. So, ta-da. So we can move this around. So here's a little pro tip. You can go and add more windows to your Blender interface, if you want, you can go here where there's a division between these windows and right click and choose vertical split and we could split off a new window. So now we could see, we could have one out here is what we call a perspective view. That's, that's not the camera, even though it's actually a secret camera. It's just, but we don't ever see it, but this is our camera view. So I can move, if I move the camera out here, um, I'll, I'll hit G to move and I move this around, then you can see the effect that it's having on the camera over there. So I'm, I'm moving the camera. That's really, really confusing. I don't do that very much. I do sometimes. Oh, also, if I want to merge these windows back together, I just right click between them and say uh, join areas and then tell which area I want to join. So, okay. Nice. So um, it doesn't really matter that much right now because we don't have anything in the scene, but we're going to move that camera in just a moment. And I'll show you how to do that a different way. So in our outliner, the only thing we have in our scene right now is a camera and a collection is just a group. So I'm going to add a new object to the scene. I'm going to add a mesh object. And we're going to talk today a little bit about the difference between meshes and curves. So Short answer is that everything that gets rendered ultimately is kind of, um, well, that's not true. Um, in a game engine, everything has to be converted into mesh and mesh is polygons. And curves are what we call Bezier curves or NURBS curves, or there are different types of curves, but those are more like mathematical formula for a cur actual curves. Whereas the meshes we're making are all angular you know, everything's straight lines. So we're going to make a mesh plane. And there it is. So other review, this little red and white circle in here is called the 3D cursor. We're going to use that a little bit more today. Uh, and, and by default, meshes show up wherever the 3D cursor is. So if for some reason I had the 3D cursor out here, and I, I'll delete this plane and I add, added a plane, it's gonna add it to where the 3D cursor is. So it shows up up here. So if we wanna snap our 3D cursor back to the center, we can use the snap menu, which is, uh, I'm gonna, here, let, me, let me fix this. So you can actually see my keystrokes here. System graphs, new displays and arrangement. And there. there we go. So now you should be able to, can you still see Blender? Blender, yay, okay. Uh, oh, it's paused. Uh, here, I'll stop this for now. Got this new crazy setup, okay. Um, so I'm gonna delete this. Now, if I wanna move my, um, 
3D cursor back to the center, I can use the snapping menu. And that's Shift S and cursor to selected. No, not cursor to selected, sorry. <laughs> cursor to world origin. There it is, okay. So I'm gonna add my plane and I'm using Shift A, which is a little shortcut. It saves you all the effort of going all the way up here. Whatever, Shift A, okay, mesh, plane. Um, so there it is. Okay, so let, I'll tell you what, let me, the other thing you wanna get familiar with that you'll use a lot is switching to your orthographic views. Um, and I'll show you what that does in just a little bit. Once we, well, here, I'm gonna delete this plane one more time, sorry. I'll add the cube back. So an orthographic view, what it does is it converts everything to a strict two-dimensional interpretation. So it takes a 3D view and makes it 2D. So you can see as we move around here, it's always, um, we always see these extra dimensions. But if we go to an orthographic view, the front view, now it's perfectly on the front. If we go to the top view, it's perfectly on the top and the side view, it's perfectly on the side. So that this becomes a square essentially from what we see. So even if we go into wireframe, and so I, my shortcut is Z left swipe for wireframe. You can see this, we can't, we can't tell whether this is a square or a cube because orthographic representation means that everything, there's no perspective being shown. So, and what, once we move the camera, we have perspective back. So really with perspective, we would never get, you can never have a strictly orthographic view like that. So even if I make this exactly lined up perfectly in wireframe, these two squares, the front and the back squares will never be the same because that's the way perspective work it, it works. If it's farther away, it's smaller. And so since the back is farther away from this than the front, it has to be represented smaller than the front, even though they're the same size. But if we go to, or, if we go to uh, or, our, our orthographic front view, that's one, then it becomes a perfect square. But as soon as we zoom out, we get this. Now, there is an exception to that. So if I, I'm, I'm in perspective view, but if I hit numpad five, it turns this into what's called an isometric view, which means it's taking away the perspective. So it keep, if, if lines are parallel, like we know the sides of a square or a cube are parallel, it keeps them parallel. So there's no perspective going on. So here, we could line that up to get the square perfectly because we're an isometric view. This looks weird because it's not the way the human eye works. So we usually work in perspective view, but sometimes it's nice to switch back and forth and that's numpad five uh, between isometric. And I think this is the shortcut here. Yeah. So this little grid over here switches you back and forth between perspective and isometric. Cool. Any questions so far on this? I have one that's a little bit off topic. Mm -hmm. So earlier when I was trying to um, mess around with shapes, once I selected off of one, I couldn't select back on like the whole shape itself. Mm, you might it still be in edit mode. Okay, okay. What, so you have to I switch back into object mode. And we're gonna go over that a lot today. So we're gonna, awesome. like, we're, we're gonna be constantly switching back and forth between those. Great, okay, sorry, it was just Does a that burning question. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. No, that's that's extremely on topic, Brad. So like, honestly, those are the questions that we want <laughs> because those are the questions that you actually have when you start working on this stuff. Anything else? Any Anything else like that? I have a question yeah. too. On topic, okay, yeah. Uh, Garrett, and the, Garrett rather, and then Juliana. Okay. Um, last class it got brought up, but uh, you make shapes and they'll end up under the same object. Uh -huh. Do you know how we could separate that so they're individual? Yeah, totally. Um, actually, hold that thought because we're gonna. That's gonna be part of this. Demo, okay. So we can demo that. Yeah. Do Hi. Um, I'm taking notes. Would you mind giving me a definition of orthographic so that sure. I can remember it easier? Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. I've looked this up many times and I always forget a good definition. Ortho. I think. 
orthographic is best understood. Oh. The way I think about it, which is not the technical definition, is that parallel lines stay parallel. That it doesn't oh. for uh, perspective, which creates the illusion. So like here, like these two lines of, of the top, this top edge and this edge are not parallel. <laughs> that yeah. This one is because this one is receding this way. This one is receding that way. Right. So that's yeah. Yeah. Means, right. So and we can see like this is actually we know this is a parallelogram or like this should be a quadrilateral parallelogram or whatever down here, but it's not, it's a diamond. It's this funky skewed out diamond, same with this, right? Mm -hmm. So an orthographic view will um, keep these lines parallel. So, whoops, I'm hitting five instead of numpad five. So that here, these lines stay. So we still have the diamond view because we are, we are getting distance. And that might be the difference between isometric and orthographic. This is where I'm not so sure about my terminology. So um, these lines stay parallel. And then an orthographic view, I think, is also, it, it's a strict front or top or side. That it's, it's, it's not only orthographic, it's actually, you don't, the, 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 the third dimension is invisible. Like you cannot see it. So that's what like an, an elevation. And so in architecture, you do different, you do elevations and plans and all that kind of stuff. So you can get like, that basically means, you know, front view, top view, side view. So, so orthographic, I think is top, front, side, bottom, you know, a strict view that's only two dimensional and isometric, I think is keeping lines that are parallel, parallel. Thank you. Sorry if it was off topic. I, oh, no, I that's that again, is... this is as on topic as you could possibly be. <laughs> so. I just, I do really well with definition. No, that's great. I just want to remember what I'm doing so yeah, that I don't too. forget halfway through. Thank <laughs> no, you. I went through this whole thing because I wasn't like formally trained in, in, in that, like as a draftsman. So I had to go. Oh, absolutely. I don't like, I've, I don't think I passed a math class ever. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Why start now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cool. That's great. No, that's good. That, that's great. I mean, you will, if you keep asking these kinds of questions, you'll pass many math classes, actually. Um, and these are the kinds it's of my questions. senior year, so I hope I don't even have to have right. them. <laughs> but these are great questions to ask. Other questions. This is, this is great. All right. Well, just to speak up, because these are, these are totally on, on topic. So these are not off topic at all. So I'm going to go back to perspective view. And okay, so what were we doing? Oh yeah, so we just wanted to demonstrate that. So you, sometimes you want that. So for example, um, it's gonna be an issue. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna go back to shaded mode. And that was again, Z and then right swipe to go to solid mode. So one of the issues with working in solid mode is that if I go to select all these vertices by hand like this, it looks like I got them all but I didn't because by default uh, solid mode blocks off from your selection things that you can't see. There's a way to turn that off, but generally what we do is just go into wireframe and you can select it. So, cause you can see it, you can select it. Another option is to use the X-ray mode up here, toggle X-ray. And then you can just go like that because now you can see it, but it's still shaded. So you get kind of the best of both worlds, I guess. So, but you can, you can, you know, that's not that important today. It's just good to remember that this is a classic error. You're like, I want to move these over. And it's like, oh no. So uh, just, just that Z shortcut is really handy. It just makes it really easy to switch back and forth and grab everything. All right, cool. Back to edit mode, back to solid mode. Okay, so let's start, let's make something. I think I'll start off, I'll go into an orthographic mode and I'll delete this cube. And so, like I said, these grid squares, these big grid squares are just over three and like about three and a half, three and a quarter foot. That's a meter, so meter, meter. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw something just really crudely, I'll just use the mouse. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of go, well, so if a person, is about 
I'm not going to use my model somewhere around that's a six foot person and I'm under six feet so I don't know he's got some kind of poncho or whatever okay <laughs> and he's got short legs don't give him a hard time all right there we go uh whatever all right so that's rough, rough. I'm drawing with a mouse a rough figure okay now let's say I want to make like a, a building that this guy can have some fun in so I'll say well let's see this building will be have some nice big windows to look out of it'll be something like that and I'll imagine kind of a unit something like that so that's a, that's a pretty big window really so i want to make something that kind of looks like that more or less so and i'm using the annotate button over here and you can turn your annotations on and off by going to the side menu over here i hit n whoops come on where is that n and then i can go to view and there's a little annotations bar down here open that up and it says note and so th this is just a little layers menu so you can add layers and all kinds of stuff i can just turn it on and off that way so vaguely i'm going to get something that's about yay by yay and who cares like i'm just doing this for fun but sometimes i like to draw something out so that maybe i can get an idea in my head of like okay so maybe i'll make a bunch of these it's kind of like And the point today isn't necessarily to make the world's greatest building, but it's to kind of give you an idea of all the things you can do and starting to generate things. So let's say I wanted to make something, let's make it two meters high. So it's gonna be a nice kind of almost like a castle height because that'd be like over 12 feet high. So that's a big, pretty big uh, monumental kind of a room there. Not necessarily monumental, but large scale um, compared to a figure. And yeah, let's see. So let's just make something like this. How would we make something like that? So basically a, a wall with three windows in it, which sounds kind of dull maybe, but maybe it hits the ground floor. So let's say, yeah, let's just make this. Let's just make this, I'll shut up. All right, so let's start off. I'll hide these. All right, so I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna add a plane as I've done several times now. I'm gonna rotate the plane on its X axis, which is the red axis by 90 degrees. So I'm gonna hit R, X, 90. Oh, that was a good point. I did all that stuff and nothing happened. <laughs> so that was kind of sad. The reason why, and this is, I'm still not entirely used to this. It's kind of a, it's one of those little blender kind of quirks. It's like a, like a charming quirk uh, is that your cursor has to be in the window that the shortcut that you're trying to execute is supposed to operate in. So if my cursor was over, my cursor was over here, so I hit R for rotate, X for the X axis and 90 and nothing happened, it's because my cursor was over here. So in order for that to work, the cursor has to be in the window in which it's supposed to work. So now if I go R, X, 90, it works. So no, you're not crazy. Your cursor is probably in the wrong place. And this came up for me a lot when I was programming, which really drove me crazy in, in the Python environment. You're over here going, da, 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 and then you say, okay, bing, bing, bing. And then you're like, wait, it's not working. And then like, oh, my cursor wasn't over there. And then it's, it's like these little tiny little cursor moves. It was super tedious. Anyway, it's kind of cute. Uh, all right, so now we've got our plane. It's rotated up here. I'm gonna close this window over here for right now, which is N. N just opens and shuts that. And this, these are the properties panels here. So I'm gonna to go to the uh, object properties, which are represented by this square orange block. And you can see there's rotation, it says 90. Uh, the scale is okay, the location's okay, but I want this, I don't want the rotation to be 90, I want it to be zero. And the way I, if I, if I set this to zero, it's not good. So I wanted it to be 90, whoops. Something under that 90. So I want it to be straight up and down, but I don't want it to be 90. So how do I have my cake and eat it too? Well, we do what's called applying the transform. And that means throw out all the previous data that you had on this object and make its current shape and position and everything else, the, make it that the default shape. And that's called applying the transform. And the shortcut for that is control A. 
So we go control A, we don't wanna reset the location. And we covered this last week, but just to repeat, we do wanna set, we wanna apply the, the rotation. We could say apply it to rotation and scale, but we don't have to, cause it won't matter. I'll just say rotation. And then watch what happens over here when I set this. So I go control A, rotation, ding, and everything, it zeroed out all the rotations. So now this is no longer a flat plane that's been rotated 90 degrees. It's a vertical plane that's at zero degrees. So same thing, right? Except that it's not the same thing for purposes of some of the operations we're gonna be doing later. So you just wanna get in the habit of doing that, applying the transform, That's you do that pretty constantly. So again, the shortcut is control A. And it doesn't hurt if you do it again, it's still, it doesn't get crazy or anything. And if I applied the scale transform, it wouldn't do anything either, so. And if you weren't to do that, what would happen? Great question. It, it's, I, I would say that, I don't know, 50% of the time when I do an operation of some sort and it doesn't work right and something seems to be really wonky, it's because I didn't apply the transformation. That'll make more sense. I, I will actually probably be able to demo this more specifically what can go wrong. Um, but it fixes a lot of problems <laughs> because if it's like you're, what you're doing really is you're kind of stacking operations on top of each other a lot of the times. And so if you've got a funky percentage on one of these values, it can really throw off the calculations like five or six steps down the line. I have a question too. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, if I wanted to export this as just like a model to import into Blender, or I mean, a uh, Unity or something yeah. along those lines, would it apply all those transformations for me? That's another great place where you want to apply that before you export it. Gotcha. Because that can really get funky. Yeah, you get into, when you're talking about bringing it into a game engine, that's where you want to be hyper focused on like not having weird stuff in your channels that, that usually comes back to really be a pain. It's, it's probably harder to fix in Unreal or Unity. You know, it's just kind of, you'll get the hang of it. It's just one of those things. It's kind of a little, it's a, for lack of a better term, a kind of a housekeeping thing. It'll, it'll just make your life a lot easier. And just paying attention to where you set the origins and all those types of things. That's really important for game engines too. And that's definitely a workflow thing. You'll get the hang of the more of the stuff you do. Yeah, great. Cool. All right, well, we'll keep going. But just again, like I said, uh, let me know at any time if you have a question on this stuff. Okay. So we've been doing all of this stuff in object mode and we're going to um, go into edit mode now. So tab. Oops, tab to go into edit mode. Okay. And you'll kind of get in your peripheral vision, you'll notice like this whole toolbar got added here. So you, you'll get these little visual cues that'll help you fit, catch yourself being in edit mode when you don't want to be. I still mess up all the time. So it's not really messing up. You just forget. So tab, and this is just a two-dimensional plane, just to remind ourselves that is. So we're in edit mode. And it, by default, it selects everything in the model when you enter into edit mode. And so the keyboard shortcut for select all is A. So it doesn't do anything because everything is already selected. But if I hit A twice fast, it deselects everything, which is super nice. So A to select all, double A to deselect. So I use that many, many, many times a minute, you know, when you're going back and forth between edit mode and object mode. All right, so we could just actually just hit A and it doesn't really matter what mode we're in, even though we're gonna inset this one face to make four new faces. We can leave it in vertex mode, which is kind of cool and it'll still work because it, it says, well, four verts or a face, it's the same thing. So we're gonna use inset. And so the inset tool, what it does is it takes this, it adds four new faces and then takes the original face and scales it down with it and stays within the plane of the original. So I hit I for inset and I drag down something like this. And just to repeat, I'll undo that. Um, again, quirk of Blender, if I'm really close to where 
I'm going to be starting the operation from, it makes it so it's really irritating. If you get this kind of thing, like, eh, I can't get that. Eh, eh. It's like you haven't given yourself enough room to do the operation. So it wants you to have it more out here away from the center, which is counterintuitive, but you'll get the hang of it. So we go I, and then we can do whatever we want. The farther you are away from the center, the more fine tuning you have. Okay, now this is where it gets kind of interesting as far as deleting. So we can hit X for delete, but whoa, we've got all kinds of crazy options here. And so when you're in edit mode, what you choose to delete is super important. And I really like the way Blender has this implemented. I think it's actually really cool. Um, so what I want to do is I want to delete only the face. So I can, that's, even though we're in vertex mode one, it still reads this as a face. So we go, okay, we'll delete it. So we say delete. Now, if I hit vertices, something very different will hit, happen. I'll hit faces and we have a hole. Ta-da. I'm gonna undo that. But watch what happens when I do X and I delete the vertices. So why did that happen? Well, because these vertices are what are making up these faces. So without those vertices, you can't have faces. You're just left with the four verts and the edges and nothing in between. Which by the way, if we do that again, if I render this now, nothing will show up. This will be invisible because you can't have a three-dimensional representation of a two-dimensional line. So this won't show up as like a really thin rectangle. Just be, it'll be invisible. So anyway, we don't want that. We just want to delete the faces. I can always say, I can also say only faces and then we do the same thing. But for this operation, it doesn't matter if we did only faces or faces, it will in other operations, so. All right, so if I go back to my annotations over here to look at my awesome drawing that I did, uh, I'll go back here. Maybe I'll just even line this up. So I'll go ahead and what I wanna do is I wanna maybe, I'll, maybe, I'll snap this to the grid here. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm going to choose increment, which is grid snap, and absolute grid snap. Turn that on. And then we go G, and I'll hold down control, because otherwise it won't snap. And I go control, control, control. Like that. All right, so these windows are a little bit more vertical. Now this is perfectly square. And so I'll turn my annotations off, because I don't want to get confused here. And I'm going to take these vertices in here. I'm just click and drag and select these four vertices. And I'm going to scale them on the X axis to make them a little narrower. Something like that. Okay, any questions so far? Can you show how you made that narrower again? How I made what? The, you made like the square inside of the one. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. So I've got my plane. Uh, I go to edit mode. That's the main thing. Make sure you're in edit mode. Make sure you have everything selected. And then you hit I is inset. Okay. See, I started too close to the center again. That's all right. I can I can fix it later, but it's just it's kind of tedious. All right. So once I've done that, um, I can delete that uh, X and then delete only faces. Okay. Then I'll go into orthographic view here, and then I'm going to grab these, and I'm going to scale them. So I'll go S X to scale them X, and I can scale these in Y S Y or not Y. Yeah. Uh, so I go S, Z, Z is up and down. Yeah. How's that working? It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. All right, well, this is kind of interesting. So these things are all 
because I didn't really change the outer scale of this. So I know this is exactly a two meter by two meter plane. So I'm gonna, in edit mode, this is very different from object mode. In edit mode, I'm gonna select all of these and now I'm gonna move them up with my increment snap and I'm gonna hold down control so it temporarily snaps and I'm gonna snap it so it's exactly, its origin point is exactly on that corner. I'll show you how I did that again. So stay in edit mode, select all. Uh, you can either turn the magnet on here, the snap, but make sure this is set to increment and absolute grid snap. This little guy up here is where you change the snapping. Uh, and I never go up here and turn this on or almost never. I usually just hold down control because it temporarily snaps it, which is a little more convenient. So that way I'm not, then I can let go and then I can hold it back down. So you want to snap it so its corner is there. Now, if you look at our genius drawing over here, it's like, okay, that's great, but we need to do this three more times. So we could do that a couple different ways. Uh, we could extrude out an edge, which might be kind of fun. Don't do this, but I'll just kind of demo what you could do. You could say, you, 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 we've been extruding faces, but you can also extrude an edge, like so the E, and then I don't want it to be moving up and down like this. I just want to move it on X, so I hit X. And I could go out here and I could snap it. So it's perfect. So I know that's exactly the same size as that. But then I'd have to take this and inset it and somehow get it to match up. So that's kind of a pain. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this two more times and then I'm going to join it together. Now there are a couple ways to do that. You could do this either entirely from within edit mode or you can jump back out to object mode and do it. Um, so let's see, let's maybe do this on, um, yeah, let's do it in object mode first. So I'll tab back out to object mode, turn this back off. All right. So I'm going to make a copy of this. And remember, like we said, please, I'm begging you, don't use copy and paste. Don't do command C, command V, or control C, control V. There's very only very specific cases where you want to do that. Uh, otherwise, it, it can cause trouble. What it does is it ends up duplicating a lot of data that gets very confusing. So generally, we don't want to do that. So what we do want to do is we want to do shift D, shift D for duplicate. Once we've got this, it's attached to the mouse. So I'm just moving the mouse around. But I just want to move it over. Whoa, I don't even know what happened there. And you can see it made a duplicate up here, plane 01. Here, let me escape. So it, I escaped from it, so it made a duplicate. So I do have two planes, but they're exactly on top of each other. And this, was this what you were saying earlier? Someone was asking the question about if two things are exactly on top of each other. So this is one way, if this is the issue, it's like, well, I wanna move this over. So you can select it in the outliner, G for move X for the X axis, and then hold down control to snap it. And it'll snap onto that grid. Well, in my case, my planes are both underneath the same plane. So if I were to press A, it would select both of them. Right, exactly. So are, is that in edit mode? You have two planes on top of each other in edit mode or an object? Two different it's objects? in edit mode. Okay. So what I would do is just uh, go into edit mode, hit three for face, and just click on top of one of them and just delete it. Just delete that face. Because you don't want to have planes okay. right on top of each other like that, generally. Did that work? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, that that wasn't exactly my question. Though. Oh, okay. You want to, if you want, you can share your screen and we can check it out. Um, okay, I can do that. Yeah. So it sounds like I'm missing the, my controls keep disappearing for my screen share. There it is. Stop. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, cool. So, okay. Yeah. So you see how these <clears throat> these two planes right here are underneath the same category. Oh plane. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, well, that's funny. You're actually doing it right. 
that's the other way you can do this. So in this case, you duplicated it, moved it over, you did the exact same thing. Yeah. This is a great example, actually. So Garrett has actually just demonstrated the other way to do this. And I was debating, that's what I was saying, like, oh, am I going to do it the way you just did it or am I going to do it this other way? So this the way you're doing it probably makes a little bit more sense. Than the so way what, I, what I did is I just grabbed um the whole object yep. and then see how they're the one object now it's not what i yep. want i'm separating yeah so but, but actually I, it is what you want <laughs> moved it over. so I'll, i'm going to show you in just a second that that is what you want but to go back to your point if you want it if you don't want it so let's go ahead and delete that copy and then you can go ahead and screen share again and then we'll just show you how to how to deal with that so you would just go into your to get rid of it so just delete that object X, yeah. And then go into here, select the other one and hit tab. And then just, uh, you're in three. So just grab all the, select all those faces. So drag a box around those, yeah, to the, yeah. There you all go. these faces X, here. Yeah. X, delete faces, yeah. Delete faces, got gotcha. you. So yeah, so actually, but that, that actually in a, in a weird way, it kind of almost saves us a step, but let's, let's, let's do it this way, I guess, the first time, so back in object mode, so tab back to object mode. There you go, now we're in business, so cool. Okay. Cool. All right, and I'll go share, share. All right. So now we have two separate objects, you know, which we don't necessarily, we're gonna go back to, we're gonna join these. So we're ultimately gonna do what we're doing over there. But it's good to understand that these are separate objects. And I, I'm just showing these things today. This is not the way to do it, or this is not the best way to approach building things. It's just like it's it's a way that actually covers a lot of really, really basic operations that you'll want to do in Blender to, to make your stuff. So it's really what today is about. It's just going, oh, okay, okay, okay. I wonder what I can do with that now. So all right, so we've got that. Let's make one more copy. Shift D, X, and then hold down Control to snap. And we've got that. Yes. All right, plane one, plane O one, plane O two. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna join these objects. So I'm just gonna shift select and I'm gonna hit control J. And now these are one object. But some things are still amiss and I'll show you what they are. So I'm gonna tab back into edit mode. And I'm gonna go, I forgot to turn this on at the beginning. I usually do this at the very beginning. I go to my overlays menu here, which is the little arrow next to these two circles. And I choose statistics. So this way I can see how many things I have selected. So what we want, we don't want any duplicate geometry. Duplicate geometry is geometry that's in the same place, but it's not connected or it's, it's in the wrong, it's not doing what we think. So if I go into vertex mode one, if I click and drag around this corner, how many vertices do you think we're gonna select? One, right? And sure enough, it says here, you have selected one out of 24 vertices. And sure enough, I go over here, one out of 24, one out of 24, one out, this is what we would expect. And I'm clicking and dragging around it rather than clicking to immediately on it. And I'll show you why. So I go around, that's one, one. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, did it merge it? Oh, wow, it did it. I got lucky. So I was thinking that these were not merged. I thought I would get two verts here, but I didn't. And that's because I think under the joining option, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna tab back out for a second. Uh, join. Oh, uh, there might be a say. Anyway, no, don't worry about it. I guess it did it. So, but I always check that because a lot of times it won't do it. Let me see. Make sure I'm in wireframe. Ah, I was in. Ah, there we go. So, aha. So, because I was in shaded mode, it wasn't letting me select because one was on top of the other. But I go to wireframe. Now I click and drag like this, and I have two vertices 
selected. Dun, dun, dun. Same thing down here. And it's because those were two separate pieces that were put together. Same thing here, two, be two here and two there. But one, 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 one. Anywhere where the duplicates aren't connect, touching each other, they're just at one, which is what we would expect. But we would need to get rid of these that are uh, that have two. And we had to go into wireframe to catch that, so that's good, good to know. So before I do it, any questions on what we're what we're about to get here? Because right now, if I just go click and click, and I move this, see how it's not dragging the other ones with it. We want those to be connected. So, so how do we do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say A to select all of the vertices. And I'm going to merge these. I want to merge the ones that are right on top of each other. And I do that by hitting M for merge. And this, at this point, if I want, if I said, well, merge these vertices at the center, this would, this is going to be like a, what is it like a, what kind of star is it that implodes on itself? <laughs> so it's like a, a white dwarf. I don't know. It becomes a super hot gas. So it would, it would take all of the matter in the universe and distill it down into a single point in space. And then it would explode in our face. So we don't want that. So what we want to do is hit M and say merge by distance. And this way, what it's going to do is it's going to say, take everything that's really, 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 really close to each other and merge them into one. Just make like weld it. We're kind of welding these things together. Before I do that, I'm also going to direct your attention to down here in the lower right hand corner and see what happens when I do this operation. So check this out down here. So I go M by distance. Oops. And I, I bubble it. There it says removed four vertices. Uh, here, I'll do it again. Undo. So select all M by distance and removed four vertices. So now if I go check this, one, 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 one. Why did it remove four? Because there were dupl one duplicate, two duplicates, three duplicates, four duplicates. So it got rid of, took those four, threw them away, and merged them together. So now if I select this edge here and move it, on Y, you can see how it's all stuck together, which is what we want. There's this one edge. So when you click on something, it's only going to select one of those things. So if there were two there, it would leave the other one behind. But that's just a quick way to test that. So this is taking a while for us to go through this because I'm going really, really, really slow. Really, this would take like 30 seconds to do this. But the first time you're learning it, you know, we're just taking our time, going slow. All righty. <clears throat> oh, this is one of the things that Sean talked about that I like, actually, I, I never did before. <coughs> if you're in shaded mode, you go back to object mode, you can come up here to this little uh, arrow up here next to your shading options and choose assign random color right here. And so it'll give a random color to each of the things you make, which is kind of cool. You can feel kind of special about it. If you don't do that, it's fine. But. All right, so you should have something that looks like that. Well, that's great for a two-dimensional lifestyle, but I want to have all three dimensions. Well, that's easy now. So now we're, we tab back into edit mode, select all, and extrude. And we have a wall with three windows in it. And so when we get out of wireframe, we don't see any of these. We're not going to see these in our the render. It's going to look like that. That's called the wireframe overlay. That happens in edit mode. Can you repeat how you did the extrude thing again? Totally. So I've got my uh, base 2D 
object here and I'm going to double check that I didn't undo too many steps. So these should be one, yeah, one, one. Okay, cool. Um, okay. And then uh, shaded. So now what I do is I go A for select all. So I select all of my elements. And then I hit E for extrude and just drag it back. Extrude is one of those operations you don't have to say Y axis or Z. It'll just, it knows because it goes in the direction of the normal, which I'll show you guys what that is later on. But. And you can always change your mind and say, oh, I want to, I wanted to go deeper. Don't extrude again because that's going to add more geometry. You would just take these faces and go G, Y. And you can make this really thick. <laughs> that's too thick. G, Y. Make it thinner. Here's something kind of neat. Like if I go, oh, it's it's too late. I, I, I deselected everything. Well, go to face mode. I want to select all of these faces on the back. I could go, you know, this, this is fine. Like half the time in my life, this is the way I would do it because by the time I've had this thought, I'm done. That's not, not a great hardship to do it that way. You're not like doing it massively wrong to do it that way. You could also do it like this. Um, go to a side view, orthographic, wireframe, switch to vert mode and grab all the verts that way and that would also get it done but if i go to side mode and if i if i were in edge mode for example and i did that same click and drag selection oh i have to be in wireframe okay if i do this oh that worked i don't know what i guess I didn't cross over the threshold where it would select those top edges. So either way, but if I did faces, probably face mode, and I went like this, it would get the stuff I don't want. So uh, side one wireframe select. There we go. Oh, what I was going to show you is there's also a menu to help you with this thing. If you have a more complicated object or something where selection is a pain, I could select one of these faces on here and there's a whole like secret menu, you know, for animal style life or whatever, where you can go, um, I think it's shift G, select similar. And so this lets you say, oh, I want to do coplanar faces that are on the same plane. And there's a, there's a bunch of stuff on here that's cool. You can do things by number of sides of the polygon, by material, which we'll talk about later. But anyway, that's just a bonus thing. Cool. Other questions about this? So that, that's actually pretty powerful. Like you could build a lot of stuff just with what we showed you just now. <laughs> you know. Yeah. How did you change the color? Yeah, change the color. So. I did it up here by going, I think you have to be in edit mode. No, I'm sorry, in object mode. You have to be in object mode. Then you go up here to the little pull down menu and then it's random. Now this won't work. This confused me because if you're in a different shading mode, it won't show up. So if I'm in wireframe, it doesn't show up. If I'm in material preview, it doesn't show up. If I'm in shaded or rendered, it doesn't show up. So you have to be in the shaded uh, material. Uh, what is it called? Rendered shading. Yeah, view shading. And then you can do random color. Color random. And we'll show other ways to change the color. But this is just assigns it a random color that won't show up in the render. And I keep saying render. And what I mean by render is the final output that takes all the lighting and all the um materials and, and makes it so if i render this it's going to render i think is white i think i don't think it's going to render this so if i go render render image first of all render always works from the camera yeah so you can see it rendered this as gray because it, it doesn't render it that cool green color so if we want to do that we have to do another step <laughs> this is just for us internally in the program to have as a reference other questions All righty. So
So this is cool. So we've got, and because I lined this up and, and I did it in the order that I did, my origin is actually in the right place, but your origin may not be in the right place. Your origin might be somewhere strange, like over here. So let's just review how to set the origin point. Now in Maya, this is one of the things that I much prefer Maya. Maya, you can do this in like one click. <laughs> We've got like five steps to do or three steps or something. So if we want to set the origin here, and a lot of times you want to do this for different operations, I'll, I'll set the origin over here just to, so I go tab into edit mode, one for vertex, like the corner vertex, where I want to set my origin point, shift S, snap for the snap menu. We want to snap the cursor to the selected vertex. So there it is. It's now there. Tab back out to object mode. Object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. I think so. Now the origin's over here. That's the orange dot. So if I want to change it back to over here, tab to edit, select the vert, shift S, cursor to selected. Tab to object, object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. I had to practice that because <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I, I used to have one, you know, anyway, whatever. So I, I had to do that because you do that a lot, that setting the origins. And like I said, I've made a keyboard shortcut. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So if you're like, oh my God, that, that's, a lot of extra steps in there. Well, you can save a little bit of time. It's not a huge amount of time, but like I'm gonna review it over here. So I'm gonna move it over here. Tab into edit mode, select the vert, shift S, cursor to selected. Tab. Now I gotta go all the way up here. Okay, well, here's how you can add a shortcut on the fly, which is kind of nice. You go object, set origin, origin of 3D cursor. Now, instead of clicking on this, right click on it, and there's an option here to, uh, mine says I'm, I'll remove the shortcut because, so you, what you'll do is you'll go object set origin, right click on it and say assign shortcut. Ha -ha. And so you can use any key. Now it can be a pain if you assign a key that's used for something else you didn't know about yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, uh, apostrophe quotation marks key because um, I know that's not assigned to anything. And so now, um, if I want to set the origin to the cursor, I just hit that key and now it did it for me. So it saves a little time. So again, just to run through it again, uh, tab, select, shift S, down, and then tab, apostrophe. So it's, you know, it's a little faster. But if you don't do that, no worries. And you can do that with any command. So that's kind of cool. You might find some. You can also do it up here under the edit preferences uh, key map. But you can you can look things up and it can be, a, it, it's a little, it's a little persnickety. Some things you can make keyboard shortcuts for, some things you can't. Usually all the things that I want to make keyboard shortcuts for are a lot more difficult than that, so. Yeah. Cool, other questions? So moving around the origin, what does that help you with again? Yeah, great question. We're gonna see um, because uh, it basically, it, 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 because the origin point is what determines kind of where an operation takes place on something. Uh, like, like here's a, let's say, um, Well, I'll show you. So let's say let's, we're designing a modular um, component. So let's say I want to have a six window wall. So what I could do is I could say duplicate and it's going to move according to the origin. So I go, well, I want to move it on X. And so I want to snap it. So this first of all makes it really easy because I know the origins right there. It'll snap right on these grid lines if I have the grid snap. So it makes it easy to do modular design. Um, and you can see how it's assigning a random color each time I make a new object, which is kind of cute. So now I want to move this on Y. There we go. Oh, it used the same color. Oh, well. What are the odds? 
So that's the main thing for the origin, but also for rotation. So if I want to rotate this, it's going to rotate uh, on Z around, you know, how do I, whoops, R, Z. So if I want to rotate this 90 degrees, you see what I'm doing here. So I would hold down control and that's what snaps it to five degree increments. So I can see up in the upper left-hand corner there, you can see the number changing. Oops, 95. Uh, rotate, R, Z, hold down control, 90. So if I have my origin in the middle, which sometimes you want. So for example, I'm going to edit mode again, select all my geometry, use my snap menu again, shift S. But this time I'm going to say, snap the cursor to, I'll do the same thing. But since everything's selected, it's going to just average those out and put it in the middle of all of those vertices. So now the origin would be here. So I go tab back, hit the apostrophe. So now if I do a rotation on this, it's going to rotate around that. So anything time you're doing, and also scaling would be the same thing. So, so I'll escape, I'll undo my origin change. So, um, so if I scale this out on X, oops, on Y rather, see it would scale from that point. So it just controls where things take place from. So uh, that's basically what the origin is. And you'll see, we're actually gonna do some fun funky stuff. We're gonna put the origin in kind of a weird place to get a certain kind of an effect, which is kind of cool. All right. Well, here, I'll, I'll, uh, well, no, I'll show you in a second. All right, so, cool. All right, so yeah, we made a wall. So let's see, let's do this. So now would be a good time to save our work. Uh, so we'll name this, let's name this, um, rename it, double click on it in the outliner. We'll call this, uh, you don't want to start your names with a number in, in, in computer world. So we'll call this like wall, like three door or something. And now we can save it. So we'll go file, save. And I'll call this something like uh, wall one. And you can see the icons, which is kind of cool. I, I love this about Blender. It gives you a little preview of the mesh. So you can just switch this up here to thumbnails. And it gives you the camera view. So our camera view, remember, is this. So here's where I wanted to demo how to get your camera view the way you want it. So N to bring up the side menu, go to the view tab and click on camera to view. And now you can, every time you move the camera, it actually moves. I mean, you pan around and it's actually moving the camera. So now we're able to frame this up in the camera view. Another keyboard shortcut is I can hit the home key and it'll um, zoom out to give me so the camera view fills the window. So now if I save this again and I go to open, see it's, it's showing me the, uh, giving me a nice kind of frame up of that thing. All right, cancel. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this, Shift D. I'm going to rotate it on Z by uh, Control, hold down Control, and go to 90. And then I'll duplicate that, Shift D, and I'll move it on X, hold down Control so it snaps on X. Something like, oh, I'm going to do this in the top view, so I can get a. Oh, so here I'd, I'd want to switch my 
I want to switch the pivot point of this, the origin. So I'll go tab. I want to be on this one. So we'll go D, uh, shift S, cursor to select it, tab, uh, G, S, control. There we go. That snaps into place there. Now let's duplicate this. Okay, I'm going to make a plane. So I'm, I'm going to snap the cursor back to the world center. Shift S, cursor to world origin. Shift A, add a plane. Mesh, plane. All right, I'll, I'll make a floor for this. So I'll go, all right. Um, so now I'm going to switch this from grid snap to vertex snap. And I'm just going to drag this over here. G, hold down control, and it'll snap it to that corner. And over here, G, snap. G, control, snap. G, control, snap. Cool. And then I'll extrude this a little bit, because why not? Yeah. I changed my mind. I want to snap it out to here. So I'll go G control snap to there. G control, G control snap to there. So I'm kind of just thinking about this as I go. I'm not, this is, I would consider this really block in stuff. Like I'm not super worried about anything yet. Uh, so now I'm going to extrude this, give it a little thickness. I'll duplicate this and snap it there. But I want it to be up a little bit more so I can just move my cursor or my origin tab one. Uh, Shift S, cursor selected, tap, uh, G, C. There we go. Might as well fix that too. Oops. All right. So, hey, I got a little building. Now there are ways we can make like mitered corners. So this is kind of funky, but you know, doesn't really matter today. Um, so now we could go to wireframe, select all these in object mode and control J, join. So now it's one object. Um, so we can call this uh, building, and then I could now check this out. This is going to be kind of fun. So now this is one object. If I want to break this down again, if I want to separate it out again, it's really easy to do. Uh, all I have to do is say, uh, go into edit mode, select all. So all the components are selected, then hit P for separate. And I can say select by separate by loose parts. And it's back to being separate pieces. Well, once I, I have to go back to object mode, you know. But if I wanted, I'll be able to select everything, not the camera everything here 
object mode, control J, join, and we've got one object. Now, the last thing I want to do, I've got one object. I want to move my origin point to the bottom corner down here. So I'm going to go uh, tab, select that vert, shift S, cursor to selected, tab. And that goes good. And I'm going to go, now I'm going to switch this to grid snap and G and snap it to that grid. It's on the floor. All right, so this has taken a while today, but that's okay, because this is kind of the fun stuff that we're getting into. But like I said, all these things you kind of practice a lot till you get them. But I'm going to show you a super powerful modifier now that's going to, you're going to love. <laughs> It'll be love at first sight. And it's called the array modifier. Did anyone here have 203 where we talked about arrays? So in, our, in, in, in computer programming, an array is basically, it's a container for things. So it's a way to you know, store things. This is kind of has a different uh, connotation here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate an array of copies of this object in any direction we want. So I'm gonna take this and we're gonna, we're gonna make this a multi-story building. So, um, close this back up. So I go over here to this little wrench tab, which is the array. It's the modifier, the modifier tab. So go to the modifier tab. And now I can add a modifier and I want to add an array modifier. So I go down here and I go to array. So you want to do this in object mode. So make sure you're in object mode and go to the wrench tab and go to add modifier array. And once you do that, your building is now twice as long. That's cool. Um, so I want this to go up. I, I have delusions of grandeur. I want to make a big tower. So I don't want it to go off to the side. I'm sorry. Can you do the array thing oh, one yeah, more totally. time? Totally, totally. So whoops. All right. So the origin of all set up. I go add my, uh, so the wrench tab. So select your object. Make sure you're in object mode. Select, make sure your object selected. Go over here to the wrench tab and go up to here where it says add modifier and choose generate array. So these are all modifiers. We're going to use a lot of these by the time the quarter's over, but these are cool. So what these do is they, they take your original geometry of that transform and all that kind of stuff, and then it adds some kind of modifier. And, and modifiers are non-destructive. That means you can re readjust them turn them on and off, that kind of thing. So they're really powerful, cool tools. So we'll add an array modifier. Did that work for you? Uh, yeah, it did. Thank you. Nice. So we want this to go stack up on top. Well, here's one of my favorite things about this is it has this thing called relative offset. So thank God, we don't have to actually know the dimensions of this object and, and all that. That would be super tedious. So when we say a unit of one, that just means move it one of this thing in a direction. And that's why it made it perfectly snap to this because it was our, our, our origin point was in the right place. So it's really easy to do these types of array operations. If the origin's in a different place, it's a little funky. So now we're gonna say, well, like, check it out. Like if we're like, I want to make the biggest strip mall the world has ever seen, we'd just be like, Bleh. so now I just added 320 <laughs> versions of that, you know? So I'm going to keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Oh, there it is. So, and I'm like 322, that's a bit excessive. That's too much. That's like, eh, all right, screw it. Yeah, you know, so you can actually just do it by eye, which is kind of cool. Like if you're, this is perfect for making steps, you know what I mean? And then keyboard shortcut, numpad period, zips you back to whatever's selected. If you don't have a numpad, view uh, frame selected. So we wanna make a skyscraper or at least a building, not a skyscraper necessarily. So we'll say, okay, so instead of going in the X axis, which is along the red, we wanna go in the Z axis, which is up and down. So we're gonna say, make that zero and make your account three to start off with. So now it made three copies right on top of each other because the offset was zero. 
but we want to go up on z so we just have to put in one because it's just one unit of this thing up there we got three why stop there So what's cool about this is that this actually these are, are these are what we call instanced copies of the original object. That is, they're not actual hard copies. So they're still tied into the original object. So I can turn this off. I can go up here to this little uh, monitor here on the array modifier, and I can turn it on and off and say, oh, do I like it this way or that way? So it's non-destructive. You can change the count. Um, you know, so right now, if we wanted to make a little city block, you know, I could just duplicate this, move this down over here, change the count of that one, you know, duplicate this, change the count on this one. So just kind of what we were doing in Figma, you know, when we were playing around and like, making different copies and building our little city that way. You can kind of do the same thing in 3D, which is pretty nice. I have a question. Yeah. I'm kind of behind. Um, all right. I'm trying to have the walls all line up, but for some reason, I'm just getting like overlapping and gapping. I'll tell you what, why don't you uh, share your screen? This is basically a pretty good, we got to a pretty good place today with this. So we can just kind of let you guys ask questions right now. We can kind of go through it and share screens and stuff because it's really helpful to, for other people to see what you're kind of coming up on. So, okay, cool. All right, Dean, what do we got here? Oh, uh, here, like this area, how it's all. Oh yeah, okay, gotcha. And then um, so what you can do, that's where you might want to just play around with your origins. So like snap them like, uh, yeah, there you go. And then snap that in and you got to kind of just be consistent in how you line them up. So either you're going to put them to the side, like, like, so if you're, let's say that of your blue wall or like um, if you zoom, uh, kind of spin around so that the red line, the X is going right to, yeah, there you go. So that's kind of our front view there. So if that's your front, that, that light yellow wall, yeah, you've got them both there. So now what you want to do is, oh, that's weird. <laughs> what happened? Uh, hit, do you have a numpad? I don't. Okay, uh, just go uh, hit the Z blue ball in the upper right hand, the axis there. The, yeah, hit that Z, yeah. Let's see what's going on. I don't know what's happening. So take your back wall and just delete it. Yeah. Nope. Uh, X, yeah, there you go. And now just copy the front wall again. So shift D. Oh, I see what's going on. It's see how it's, it's actually overlapping inside of there. So uh, undo. I just undo and undo again, undo the delete. So we'll just fix it. So. Um, so you can see how if you zoom in on the uh, lower left-hand corner of your of your thing, yeah, zoom in on that now, uh, hit Z, and then swipe left to wireframe. Now you can see how that's overlapping. So we just have, it just didn't look like it. So here's what you're gonna do. Just uh, scroll out a little bit more. So zoom out a little bit more and great. Now grab the other three walls except for the left wall. So grab the, the back, right, and front walls. Yeah. And then uh, G, X, and then hold down control and just scooch it over. There you go. There you go. Perfect. And now grab your back wall and hit uh, G, Y, and hold down control. There you go. And if it's not lining up perfectly, if you care, you can, uh, looks pretty good, but you can just switch your origin to the 
backverts there, you know, whatever, or turn off snapping. It doesn't have to be, we're not getting too uptight about oh this. My it looks good, it is good. There you go. So you can hit Z and then swipe right and you can see it now. So Z is Yeah, good. there's still like a weird gap. Yeah, that little bit there, that's because of the origin point. So here, you're just going to switch the origin. So uh, select your back wall. Um, uh, tab. Select the upper left-hand corner vertex of that wall and hit Shift S and then go cursor to selected and then tab to object and then go object, uh, set origin, uh, origin to 3D cursor, I think. All right, now uh, G, Y and hold down control. Oh man. That looked good. Oh, is it still off kilter? Oh, so we should just uh, to the vert. So go ahead and uh, go to your uh, next to the magnet, switch it from increment snapping to vertex snap. Yeah. And now go uh, go back to and go back to the top view again by hitting the blue Z or top that, that even better that way. And now select the object and go. G, Y, hold down control, and then drag your cursor over one of those corner verts on the other wall. And it'll, yeah, drag it up. There you go. Think, snap. Oh, yeah. Damn. You're in business. You're snapped cool. in. Yeah, it takes a while to get the hang of this stuff. Like it took me a while. Like you have to kind of practice it. That's really what this is kind of about these first couple of weeks or just kind of getting the hang of it. So, yeah, that's good. Cool. Thank you. Cool. And we have other ways, like there are tricks, like we can do a 45 degree, basically cut like a mitered corner into these things so we don't get these seams of these overlaps of the walls and stuff like that. But for today, it's fine. It's great. Good job. I got a question too. Bring it. All Who's right. That? Garrett. Garrett, okay, nice. Yeah, you want to share your screen? Yeah. Cool. Can you see it? Yeah. So I want to scale this plane across the top. Nice. But um, it goes from the left and the right. I'd like to just drag right, it that's over where the here. Origin point. Right. So what you do is uh, hit tab into, into uh, edit mode. Uh, hit one. Okay. One. And then uh, you're in scale mode. So go to the uh, uh, your toolbar to the very top there, the box with an arrow in it uh, to the um, toolbar to the left. Next box, to the box with the arrow in it? This. Uh, down below, just a little bit. You're almost there. Uh, right up. There you go. That's okay. the, the yeah, so grab that and then select the uh, upper left corner of the plane, upper left the uh, right. there you go upper left corner right down there, and then uh, hit Shift S, and then cursor to selected, just like we did on a thing there. Yeah, there you go. Does the cursor snap to that corner? Then tab yeah. into object mode, and then, and then I scale uh, it. Nope, not yet. Go up to object, uh, the object menu and go uh, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. There you go. Now you can see. Oh, OK. It. That is very useful. Thank yeah. you. That's your friend. Let's see, can I snap with scale? Well, instead of scale, what I would do is uh, just hit escape, or undo, or whatever. Uh, and then just uh, grab, uh, yeah, so hit that. Yep. And now uh, hit 2. Oh, I'm sorry, you're in object mode. Uh, tab into edit mode. Uh, hit two and then uh, hit the uh, bottom edge of the plane that's going to, yeah, that one. Select I that it's, edge. I think I'm pretty sure it's selected. Okay, cool. And then just hit G, Y and then move it down. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, G, X. Just hit X. So, yeah, G, X, my bad. And then hold down control and, and drag your cursor over the corner vert of the, of the big object. So just drag it. Uh, it looks good. I'll show you. If you um, to snap it, I'll show you how the snap works. Can you give me control of your screen? Oh, is it not shared? Oh, it's shared, but you can also give me control over it, which is remote control. There's a little mouse down at your bottom of your Zoom. Oh, uh, okay. So you can say, give Miles. Yeah, you, you got control now. So I have control. So now I've got this selected. I tab into edit mode. I select this edge oops and so um, yay so i'm going to move it i'm going to restrict it to x so now it's just going back and forth right so even if i move over here 
it's still um, moving on X, right? So now what I do is you've got your, your snapping on. I just have to right. click and I, not, not click. I just have to drag this over any of these verts that are on the right location and it'll snap it exactly. Right. Um, so I just uh, click there. So that's the way the snapping works. It's like you, you set it, you restrict it to an axis so it can't move off that axis. But then you can put your cursor wherever you want and it'll give you that little orange circle. It's really cool the way it works. So it's much more efficient to just move yeah. one side of so the I shape. I rarely scale. So I go on two, I'll do this one, and I'll let you do it. So, I go so just don't scale things unless I just want to grow it in size. Exactly. I think it's easier just to move. It's just and it, moving is a little less dodgy. So yeah, yeah. you do this, you go G and you go uh, Y. And then hold down, or you don't have to hold down control. You just drag it until you get that nice little orange circle and you click it and you're set. I'll let you do that. Awesome. Cool. Right on. Let's see. Got a. Oh, I can just. There we go. All right, cool. Nice. Other questions? Yeah, um, I'm struggling with snapping objects too. All okay, right, yeah. Let's do it. So. Uh, okay. Oh, well, I have a question. Yeah. Um, is this due later today? Blender no. keeps no. crashing on my computer, and I had no. to let go of a lot of stuff. Yeah. No, no, it's not due today. This is just we're just kind of getting the whole point of this is just to kind of get your blender legs under you. Like you're just supposed you're just kind of getting used to this type of stuff. This is pretty. Um, it's actually a lot. It's really complicated, especially if you've never done this stuff before. So it takes a lot. Yeah. You need it a lot. So like, I wouldn't expect you to just like make something really rad the first time. You know, it's like just take your time, work it through a bunch of times. Don't be afraid to just try different stuff and just experiment. Still. Thank you. I don't know if my computer right now can handle it. Um, I might have to turn this in at a later date this week other than today. That's fine. We're, I, I'm not even expecting you guys to have stuff to turn in this week. So it's okay. just, it's just work time. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. sure Thank sure. you. Yeah. So yeah. this, this isn't due today. Right. No. Okay. Yeah. Good. We're all good. <laughs> no, I, I don't think we won't, we won't look at it until next week at the earliest. So, and, and we're going to build on this. So this is really kind of the foundation of everything else we're going to do. So it's good to just get comfortable with this. So um, it, you really have to just repeat it a bunch and, and, and just let yourself kind of play around with it. What was that shortcut to merge the vertices? With yeah, vertices? as you select the vertices and you hit M and then it gives you a choice ah, okay. about where to do the merging. How do you join things? Um, was it like shift J or? Control J. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, cool. And you have to be in object mode to join things. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. And to separate them, you have to be in edit mode. Go figure. <laughs> that always confuses following, me, so. I've been following along with this and I've been trying to like create walls around this, but like they don't exactly line up with one another or to the sides of this plane right here. Okay. Um, and <laughs> I was right, so what do you want to do? You want to have those walls match the side, the sides. Yeah. Oh, right, cool. And yeah. I feel like it has something to do with snapping. Yep. Okay. So snap away. Once you get okay. the end of the snapping, it's really cool. And until you, you do, it's just like a nightmare. But you will get it actually once it because it does make sense. It just takes a little while to get it. It's not like it. So okay. I'll, let me just demo it really fast. If you want to give me control of your screen, I can kind of for sure let you walk through it. Okay. So. Hang on, I have to let you do it with system preferences. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have I, to. You don't. We don't have to do that then, if you don't want. So. We, um, all right. Well, then walk me walk yeah, me through we'll, it. We'll just walk you through it. So, um, so right now, if I wanted to just snap that one wall as it is to the base of this plane. Yeah. What we want to do is we want to set the origin to the base of the wall. So you go, you look at your wall. And uh -huh. grab, let's say, let's uh, spin around like about 90 degrees. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, sure. even, even a little, yeah, there you go. So okay. grab the front left bottom vert. So tab into edit mode, hit one, mm -hmm. hit one, select the bottom left uh, front. It looks... uh, no, 
Uh, these two right here? Just one. Just select the front one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, the, yeah. There, that yeah. one. The front one, yeah. The front one, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, the other one, sorry. The, I guess. Oh, you're, this you're, one. That. Yeah, that one there. Yeah, cool. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to snap the 3D cursor to that okay. vert. So you hit Shift S. And then you go all the way down, six o'clock, cursor to selected. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And then you tab out. Mm -hmm. I so, can't tab out. Oh, it's okay. Object mode. And then you yeah. object menu up in the upper left there. Yeah. Object so menu snap, set and then selection oh, two. No, no, no. Oh, oh, it says set origin. So under train. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Origin to 3D cursor. Yeah, there you go. Bing. Cool. So now it's all set. So now what you're going to do, no, you don't have to do all, not, nothing there. You're done. Okay, <laughs> so, okay, okay. Good job. Now you go up to the, uh, next to the magnet. That's your snap. Oh, actually, we're just going to snap this to the grid, but go ahead and, and, and see that little thing next to the magnet up there with the arrow pointing down. Where Straight up are from we where you are, below, yeah, to the right. And that's uh, the magnet right there that you're on. That's a magnet. Oh, uh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screen and that's, that turns it on screen. and off, but leave it off right now because I think it's easier to keep okay. it off. And now, but next to the magnet, there's the, the snapping settings. Nope. Nope. <laughs> go to the magnet. To the right. Yeah, there you here? go. Right? Okay. So that, and so increment, you've got increment, which means grid snap and absolute grid snap. So since this plane is lined up on the grid, we can use increment. So you're fine. Your settings are fine. But we're going to mm -hmm. probably change vertex later, but let's leave it on increment for right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you just hit uh, G and then Z and then hold down the control key and it'll snap to the top of the grid. So just move it up, just move it on up. And so, uh, it should just snap right in there. Yeah. It's no, I forgot to hit control. All right, there you go. Hold down control. Wait, that didn't. All right, screw it. Let's do vertex okay. snap. <laughs> so go ahead and go go sw sw switch it from increment, yeah, to vertex. Vertex. All right. And now uh, uh, just hit G, Z, and then uh, hold down control and go GZ, and then now just drag your cursor to one of the corners of the plane. As it's moving. not doing that. Oh, wait. You have to drag it. So you have to drag it on top of the, here, I'll, I'll demo it uh, on my screen here so I can show you. Um, here, I'll just show you really fast here. Um, so, Uh, so, can you see my screen now? Oops. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so I've got a plane and I've got a box. All right, so let's move it off over here somewhere. All right, so I want to get this kind of like you've got over here. I want to. Um, All right, so I've got this thing. And so I've got the, I'm gonna snap my cursor or my, my origin point. I'm gonna set the origin to this. Okay. So if I wanna get this to line up on this thing over here, let's say I wanna snap it to this corner. I go up here to vertex and I go G I'm just moving this around. So I, God knows where I am. I'm just going, ah. But if I hold down control, that'll turn on the snapping now. So now I can just go. And you see where I've got those white, those four triangles? That's where my cursor is. I have to drag my yeah. cursor over. And then I can snap it in there. Now, I, I want to snap it to the origin. So I can go up here to my vertex settings and say, actually, do active down here and I think that'll work better. There we go. So it just snaps onto that. So it takes a little getting used to. So I just go and so I drag, I hold down control and see, watch the white cursor that's the green ring is around. I, I drag that on top of where I want these things to snap to. And then the object snaps into place. So wherever I put the white arrows, that's where the object goes. 
So I think I see what my problem was. I did not set the vertex I wanted to. I wanted it to snap to. Right. So I think using point active, on the plane. Yeah, using active. So sometimes closest works. I'm not, you can get different results with this. So. All right. Did it work? So, no, I'm still trying to make it snap to the vertex I want it to snap to. How do I do that again? Yeah. So let's see. Um, well, if you want, if you can set your screen up to share, I can, it might be easier if I just demo it for you, uh, if you can give me those permissions, but. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. So take your time. Okay. So are you seeing it? Yep. Okay. Now let me allow remote control so that you can do that. Okay. Open system preferences. Sorry, this is going to take a bit. Yeah, no worries. Okay. All right, cool. I can control your screen. All right, so um, what I do is I, I go to object mode. Mm -hmm. I grab your wall here. Yeah. And so, and I've got this set to, I'll set this to active which I didn't have you do before. So sometimes that works a little better. Okay. And now I'm going to say, put that point here, let's say, or over here. Okay. Um, so the way I do that is I hit G, right? And so I hit G and I'm just moving over, all over everywhere. So Lord knows. Um, so what I want to do is I want to hold down control for snap. So I hold down control. And then I just drag these arrows over and it's going to turn into an orange circle when I get to the Oh, point. oh, I see. And then I click. Oops. I didn't quite do that right. The G. And then I hold down control and I get to that orange circle and I click it. Oops. <laughs> would it I think there's a it, delay like with the screen share thing, but here we go. Come on. Okay. Click. Why is it not? Oh, I think it's just, I, I think, no, it's, wait, I think it's, it's a Zoom thing. So you can, you can do it. You, you try it. It'll, it'll work for you. Okay. So I controlled the wrong thing. G and then control. And then it's not doing You got to drag it right on top of that cursor and it'll turn orange, that, the corner, right on top of the corner. Are you holding down control? I, oh no, I wasn't. All right. yeah, that's all right. Got to hold down control. And Son of on. a, hang on. <laughs> so G, and then hold down control. And drag there we go. Oh. And, and, and then once you get it there, just left click on it. And it shouldn't be that tricky. I'm not sure what was. No, I, I don't know what I did. Maybe it's a problem with the plane. No, it, it should work. I think it's just it, there's something funky going on with the, with the. Uh, this here, let me see. Wait, I did it! I did it! I did it! Right, okay. Nice. Yeah, I think it's just. Yeah, it should just just be able to click it. So I think I was there was a delay. Yeah, there you go. So Shift D and then G and then Control, right? Yeah, and then right? you can snap it to the vert of the. So you want to probably rotate around. So hit hit oh, Escape. Almost had it. Hit Escape. And then hit, just delete that last copy you made. Yeah, I did. It's already right. it's so now rotate to the front. See, so you're going to use that origin point, so you can yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But now shift D. Yep. And hit X, so I'll constrain it to X, and then uh -huh. uh, move it over, and then hold down Control, and snap it down to the lower right corner of your other door or your other wall there. Yeah, so move that it's, white cursor mm, over, white cursor over the top, the bottom right corner of the wall. So you want to snap it to, here, I'll show you. Um, so, so you're going here. All right, so we go G, X. E. Oops. You're not control. Okay, there you go. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's the plane. So we need so we go duplicate, uh, shift D, X. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then control. And then I'm going to drag my white 
arrows right over that. Oh, okay. And it won't let me, it's not letting me set it right. So you'll have to do All it. All right. Well, I'll have to do it. That's okay. That's but you get okay. the idea. So you, the do. white arrows are the key. It's weird. It, it takes you a while to get used to, but once you get it, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hang on. It, uh, it sent me to a render screen. Oh, okay. So it's share your screen again. <laughs> I'm trying. Right. I'm so sorry. That's all right. No, no, don't be sorry. This is like literally this is what it means to learn how to do this stuff. There's no <laughs> so you can see in the upper up on the, this part up here, uh, there are these tabs at the very oh, you can't see what I'm doing, but at the top here, you got these tabs. Go click on the one that says layout. Layout. Where are we? Next to help. Okay. To the right of the help menu. There. Oh, Matt, thank, you. Uh -huh. yeah. thank you. Thank you. So thank you. So those tabs are really cool. We'll we'll get into those more later. But yeah. Thank you, Miles. That sure. helped me a lot. <laughs> That's great. Um. Yeah. Uh. So cool. All right. Well, we're oh shoot, we're out of ten. Um. And unfortunately, I have another meeting at 3.30, but uh, otherwise I can usually stay and help out. But um, if you guys have questions, <laughs> um, let me know. Oh, and there's gonna be, a, there's a YouTube link that will have all of these class sessions uploaded if God forbid you wanna watch these again, but sometimes there are things in there. <laughs> And then you can you can I'll put that up on Moodle. I didn't I don't I didn't get it up last week. So I got a I got a question. Yeah. And then Juliana, or Juliana yeah. actually you were first. She Sorry. she was first. Yeah. She can go. Juliana. Yeah. Hi. Um. So my question is, will you be posting? Sorry, I got distracted. Will you be posting links to where we can turn stuff in on Moodle, or should we email them to you? This I will. Is for future but, but reference, nothing's, not nothing's necessarily about this assignment. Yeah, nothing's going to be due this week. So this all okay. is just stuff of you guys just, we're just woodshedding right now. So we're just kind of, okay. we're just causing trouble. <laughs> so <laughs> My favorite. Worry. Like, like I always think like when you're first learning this stuff, there's so much overhead mm -hmm. of just getting the hang of it that um, just play, have fun with it, experiment, make mistakes, all that kind of thing. And then once you get the hang of it, you're like, oh, okay, I think I can make something now. <laughs> You know, but until you get that point, it's just kind of, I don't want to torture anybody. It's, it takes the fun out of it. So have fun with it for right now and we'll get there. So like just today, like, you know, we made, we, we probably made, it looks like everyone made kind of a cool little building start. Is it perfect? No. Is it, you know, the greatest thing you're ever going to make? No, but that's great. You made something that's cool. And we can make more stuff. And a lot of times, especially we'll talk about kind of the economy of 3D modeling, which is that you don't want to invest more time into something that's not going to be important. So like if something's in the background, it probably doesn't have to be super modeled, you know? And so you want to, you always have to kind of figure out what needs to be modeled and what doesn't. So that's part of the, we're kind of just learning our trade right now. So you're good. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, Garrett, or did, yes. did that answer that Juliana? So nothing's going to be due this week. And then I'll have a, a turn in, instruction set uh when we do have something due but i'll give you guys time to to, <laughs> to get your stuff in <laughs> thank you sorry uh, i had okay. to sneeze <laughs> All right. good all right cool garrett so my question was i heard a couple people mention their computers not being able to handle blender and i was curious if uh the sou remote desktop environments would be um capable of handling blender instead I have no idea. Actually, I've never here's tried. a here's a link to it. Okay, give it a shot. It I'd a shot. I'd suggest that give it a try. Cool. I've never tried that. Yeah. Those are uh, computer. Those are server computers that you can use that the school provides. I'll be dang. Um, whoops. I'm gonna check that out. I'd be curious. Is there anything uh, in particular you want us to have done by the next time we meet? Uh, well, I, I think that it's, um, just keep playing, you know, I, I'd say, like, Hey, can we get, can you make a, 
a model kind of like we just did today can you make something all the way to like that's kind of like we were using an array and you make a little building that has multiple stories to it kind of just exactly what we did today that'd be great and if you if that was if you're already done with that and you're kind of ready to move on you can make that more elaborate and we'll show you how an array you can really do cool stuff because it's 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 non-destructive so you can keep adding to your object in the array and it'll, it'll kind of instantly get updated throughout the whole skyscraper so if you change the window size or add some detail to it that all gets proliferated cool and then we can look back on the recording to figure yeah. out some more of that array stuff if totally we need to. totally and there are lots there are tons of uh demos and things online as well so if you don't Sometimes the class is like waiting through two hours of video to find like two minutes. You can probably find like just how to use an array, <laughs> you know, and Blender might be faster, but yeah, definitely you can go through the, the, the class too. So yeah. And I'll, I'll post them the Moodle link uh, for the, um, on Moodle. So I have two, I have like an hour's worth of meetings now. So it'll be sometime right after that, but I'll have it up today for sure. Right on. Thank you. All right. Nice. And I'll, I'll post some, I have some notes that I just kind of made for myself, you know, just on like how to do all this stuff where I just kind of diagram that out. I'll, I'll just kind of post these somewhere too. Maybe I'll just throw them into the uh, Figma document or something. So, or I'll put them on the Moodle site for right now. Um, that way you have kind of like a little summary of all the, and again, sort of sometimes waiting through two hours worth of lecture. <laughs> it's not the most efficient way to do it. Cool. All right. Well, good stuff today. Oh, got to roll. So uh, hate to jump jump out so fast, but uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday and have fun. Just play. Start collecting images that'll help you develop your city, like things that give you a sense of different camera shots, different repetition ideas. All that stuff really makes you a lot smarter in terms of making things just looking at it. So collect that stuff, stash it in a Figma document or something so you can kind of have easy access to it and you can share it with other people. We can kind of talk about it. So, you know, this is just kind of the, the practical way to work on this stuff. Just keep all that stuff together and keep looking. Okay. All right. See you guys soon. All right. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. Bye.